Guys, hi. Today, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you somebody who I've been following for a while online, who hasn't actually been online himself for a very long time, but he's been a practitioner of the body and I'm going to let him give the detailed introduction about himself. His name's Peter Strange. He's based in London in the UK and I'm over here in Australia. And very recently, more recently, I had a session with Peter, which was an energetic clearing session and please forgive me, Peter, you can clear up what that actually was. And the reason I wanted to allow the rest of the population of the world to see and hear from Peter is because some ailments that have been hanging around in my body for the last couple of years have mysteriously pretty much left the building, strangely. So all my friends have noticed, wow, you're walking really quick and skipping and running and jumping. So for something to have that much of an impact, I just truly believe the rest of the world needs to hear this. So Peter's also, the reason I was following Peter is one of my overseas clients in London started seeing Peter because he's a level four Czech practitioner, which is a very, very detailed way of learning how to assess the human body across all of the way we live as an organism and then helping a person to get to optimal health. You might be able to explain that better as well. I'm a level one and that took me 10 years to get to level one. Peter's level four. It's a lot of money and it's an incredible um, achievement actually to do that. Peter, what would, how would you introduce yourself? How, what would you tell people that you actually do? Okay, great. Well, first of all, thank you, Kate. That was a great introduction. Um, I almost feel like I don't need to say that much, but um, I've been in the sort of health and fitness and wellness uh, sphere for about 25 years now so quite a long time um, and uh, it was always an area that I wanted to be involved in. Um, I had some quite serious injuries as a teenager. Um, I was a very keen sportsman and uh, that's but that was originally what I, what I wanted to do with my life and uh, these injuries kind of put a stop to that and uh, I had quite a difficult period in my teenage years where I wasn't allowed to participate in sports or physical activities um, and uh, that kind of persisted although I got back to it I never got back to the level that I was at previously and um, I had pain issues really throughout my teenage years and my early 20s and uh, I got attracted into the fitness industry uh, just by really following my intuition and I knew it was an area that I wanted to be involved in and uh, I suppose my main motivation was to try and help other people to not have to go through what I went through, you know, with seeking answers, um, you know, for seemingly unsolvable problems. Um, you know, I, like yourself, I suffered from pain for quite a long time and, you know, I tried lots of different things and nothing was really quite the complete answer. But when I started to understand the body, um, I was able to start healing myself. And then my own practice has kind of evolved from there. Um, I'm, I'm someone who doesn't like to be defeated by a problem. So, you know, I, I tend to attract people with complex issues. And um, if I didn't know how to resolve things, I would try and find out how to do it. So I'd go and do my own research. And um, this has just led me on a path of discovery, really, just um, lots of different learning from lots of different masters, taking all the best bits and just trying to create my own way of doing things. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but obviously we can delve deeper into all these different areas as we go along. Yes, because, I mean, there's plenty of personal trainers out there, but I wouldn't say that what you do at the moment is, is that. Maybe you do do some of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you said that you had a, was it 15 years ago, there was a, you had a, an encounter with a, someone that was similar to a Shaolin monk and you had a spiritual awakening. And ever since then, everything in life has been different and now obviously you use that with your clients and I know that's no formal energetic healing training but wow it's very powerful can you tell us a bit more about that experience yeah absolutely so uh, it was about 16 years ago um, I was working in a gym in central London and uh, there were a group of um, Shaolin monks or they really officially they'd be classed as Shaolin lay monks so they're people that have uh, been inducted into the Shaolin Temple because of their mastery of energy and the, and the, and the skills that are taught there. And um, 
they were doing a class, they were hiring the studio in the, in the gym where I worked and they, they did a class in there, which was not open to the gym membership. Um, it was, they, they rented out the studio, they brought their own students in, they used to stick posters over the windows of the, of the studio so you couldn't see what they were doing in there. So it was all very secretive and I just got curious and I got speaking to uh, the master and he invited me to attend the class. And to be honest with you, um, I didn't really get that much from that class. Um, I had done Tai Chi for about a year prior to that. And um, I had just started to kind of feel the flow of Chi or energy in my body. Um, and when I did this, this class, it was just, I found it very strange. Um, basically what, what he was doing was um, uh, a form of spontaneous Qigong. So he would transmit his energy into the students and their body would start moving of its own accord and find its own flow. Um, and uh, I guess I couldn't really let go enough to really experience this, but I knew it was something important. So I managed to convince him to allow me to work with him privately. And um, I probably only ever did about two or three sessions with this guy. And it was the first session was absolutely profound, probably the most amazing thing that's ever happened in my life. Um, so I was at this, uh, this, this guy's house. Um, we literally sat on his living room floor about six feet apart. Um, and he just smiled at me. He didn't say a word. I didn't see him make any physical gestures or anything like that. And, uh, my body started to go into spontaneous movement. Um, and it was just so kind of fascinating and, um, I don't know, I could, I, I just wanted to see where it would go, you know? So it started with uh, just gentle mobilizations, my neck, my shoulders, all the joints. And I very quickly realized my body's doing, doing exactly what it needs to do to heal itself. It just felt so right. You know, my body was going into uh, postures and movements that I'm, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be comfortable to go into, um, but it felt as though there was a release occurring. And he just left me in the room um and this energy kind of became more and more exaggerated I, I was doing quite extreme stretches that i wouldn't be able to do under normal circumstances um i i quite literally rearranged this guy's whole living room i was moving furniture around kicking my leg out and moving you know hooking my foot under the sofa and moving it around and uh basically uh it was, it was really amazing um it accelerated and accelerated up to a peak and then I just kind of came down again and somehow rearranged all the furniture back to its original position came back into my uh position seated cross-legged on the floor where he left me and he walked into the room at that moment and he just smiled at me again and basically then he took me outside and um I laid on the grass in, in his garden and as soon as the sun hit my face I had this enormous emotional release so I, I really literally experienced every human emotion simultaneously. And I saw every experience that I'd had in, in my life up until that point in front of me, all in, all in, all in that moment. Um, yeah. So it was really profound. Um, but what, I, what actually came out of that was um, very quickly a realization that um, I was supposed to be doing healing work. Um, it, when you go into this spontaneous state, which actually anyone can learn to do, and we can talk about that later, mm -hmm. um, when you go into this spontaneous state, um, you just basically become completely trusting in the wisdom of your own body and your own mind, even in terms of exactly what to say, what to do, um, all in its right timing. And so I would come out of these sessions and I would still be in this state to some extent. And I would go back into, I'd go back to work. I'd go back to the gym. I'd be training my clients. Back then I was only doing personal training. I wasn't, I wasn't doing any uh, hands-on therapies or healings or anything like that and um, I'd get back to you know doing a session with one of my clients and I'd still be in this state and I would know exactly what to say um, to get the best response from the client I could feel in my own body what what they were feeling in their body um, so I was able to guide the sessions a lot a, a lot more effectively and uh, like for example could you feel their injuries yeah, I, um, I could feel where there was uh, imbalance in the body or, um, you know, disruption in the normal flow of energy in the body. 
Um, I wouldn't say, you know, if someone was in excruciating pain, I wouldn't find myself in excruciating, in excruciating pain, but I could, I would know that something wasn't right in the, in the particular area. Um, and I would know exactly the right cues to give, the right exercises to give um, in order to, you know, to, to, to work through that. So I was really powerful. Um, but what I, um, what I was slightly worried about was how could I explain this to my clients? You know, um, I'd always kind of approach things from a very scientific point of view. And, you know, my, my clients knew me for that. Um, and so I found it quite challenging to know how to explain that I had this kind of newfound ability, which actually I believe was, I, I always had, but doing this work with this Shaolin monk or this Shaolin lay monk was just what unearthed that or, you know, triggered that to be released. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, took, it's took me on an amazing journey, really. Um, I knew that, um, because I, because I didn't know how to explain to people, I felt that I needed to get some body work qualifications. Um, and so not long, probably about a year after that, that event, um, I came into some inheritance and I basically closed, closed down my business for almost a year and I, I took myself out to the States and I completed all the check training and I did various other trainings out there. I did a uh, neuromuscular therapy uh, diploma and, uh, and, I, and, and I just let my intuition guide me to other courses and, you know, things to do that would kind of just add different facets to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate in the way things have unfolded, but it's not all luck. It's also paying attention, you know, following signs. Um, which again, you know, we can talk more about that as well. Yeah. I mean, feel free to just let it, let it roll out. Do you think that we all have that ability? Because you've mentioned that it probably enhanced something that was already there in you. I do believe that we all have healing abilities. You know, certainly we all have, um, mechanisms, mechanisms within us for our own self healing, you know, and, uh, healing is just about. Uh, the ability to direct energy and intention, you know, so if we have good intentions, um, we're actually always healing those around us just, just with our intention. Um, so, you know, it's quite interesting even, uh, well, yeah, when I started first getting into this, um, there was, uh, certain people that, um, I'd had in my life previously um, and I'd kind of lost, lost touch with people that I, were, I was at school with and uh, people that I'd kind of started out with in the fitness industry when I first started. And um, yeah, I found, so I, I, it was interesting. A lot of these people started reconnecting with me and, you know, obviously you have the conversation. So what are you doing now? You know, and I, and I would tell them what I was doing and try and explain it. And, and, and they wouldn't be surprised. They'd never be surprised. And that, that kind of surprised me, you know, so I'd have people saying to me, well, yeah, we always knew you would do that. You're a healer, you know? And, and, uh, you know, there was one, there was one girl that I actually went to school with. I, I lost touch with her for about 12 years and, you know, she, she was completely unsurprised by what I was doing. And, um, you know, she said to me, you know, don't you realize you, you healed me when we were at school, you know, because you gave me space and you, you know, you, you listened to my problems and you were there for me, you know, and I never thought of it that way, but it's, you know, we can all heal each other just by being there for each other, holding a space for each other, having good intentions for each other, um, you know, and uh, visualizing the outcomes that we, that, that we wish, you know, to take place. So I think we all have it within us, um, you know, but we also do have, each of us has our own unique gifts or our own unique way of expressing that, um, if that makes sense. Interesting. Yes, I guess anybody can take it in, I guess, whatever way they do take it. What are some, because I, I mean, I, I'll go into it in a second, but it's not relevant at the moment. What are some examples of the work that you do, I guess? Because it's not like we can say, Oh, you're a kinesiologist or, Oh, you're this or oh, you're that because there's not really any mm. formal training. And what I like about the stuff that you say often is it's, you know, you have the ability to do that. It could fix itself. Just trust. It'll be okay. Mm. Well, I mean, there is formal training as well. 
I mean, if I if I if I didn't have the the Czech qualifications, you know, certainly that's of great help to me in terms of you know understanding how the body works and how everything fits together and how you know we're a system of many systems. Um, so I've learned a tremendous amount through the Czech Institute. Obviously, as I said, I did a neuromuscular therapy qualification. Um, I I also uh, did a qualification in something called core therapy, which is like a, an amalgamation of um, Eastern and Western, so traditional Eastern, mostly Chinese um, practices aligned with kind of Western theory. So I did that as well. Um, and I've, I've, I've done various other, various other things, various other formal trainings um, in how to um, manipulate subtle energy and things like that. But, you know, a lot of it is my own trusting my own intuition and kind of also knowing which pieces from all those trainings are most valuable and how to kind of synthesize those together into something meaningful. Um, I mean, I, I place a lot of emphasis now on the, uh, the mental emotional component because a lot of people's uh, challenges with pain, either physical or, or emotional pain, have their root in, you know, emotional issues, you know, so um, that's become a big part of my work. And I probably do have less training on that side of things. But I think in a way that helps me because I'm not, you know, confined to um, a certain belief system or way, way of looking at things, because I think we are all quite unique in the way that we see the world. Um, so really that the emotional work I do is very much uh, based on me researching my own experience, you know, and um, kind of just, just, and also, as I said, holding a space for people and really listening to people and just trying to almost speak back to them in their own language, you know, so that they can hear themselves, you know, hear their own inner voice, if you like. Yeah. So what are some examples of, what can you think of off the top of your head? Because I can think of my, some of the, for example, something that I've noticed afterwards and you mentioned that you know there's the pains the pain can be caused by an emotional response and I then go into before I met you I then go into it well if it's this part then it means anger and if it's the right side of the body or the left side of the body then it means male female whatever you know whatever I've learned I'm just going by what I've learned instead of now after that session with you a couple of weeks ago I can feel the thought pattern go to come up and I'm it's like my mind's looking for it because the habit of thinking it's not even there anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to, and I didn't have to go through a counseling session. I actually didn't do anything. I just sat there. And then the next day it's, well, a couple of days later, it's, it's gone. I can feel what used to be a habit of thinking about it, even just waiting to get up and have the pain or waiting to walk and for my foot to hurt or for this to hurt or anything, the habit of waiting for the pain's gone, but also the habit of, I don't even know what it is, to be honest. There's a habit of feeling guilty about, you know, stuff to do with mum. There's nothing for me to feel real guilty about, but it's not there anymore. And as a result, the communication there is a hundred times better. Yeah. Um, all because no, that, I, I had something there. Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think we're all so subject to conditioning uh, from outside of ourselves. Um, you know, and that comes in many forms, you know, a lot of that's absorbed in our childhood years. So like certainly the first seven years of our life, um, possibly, you know, first 14, you know, so we, we, you know, absorb everything around us, you know, so what our parents tell us, what our teachers tell us, um, what the, what the media or the TV, you know, tells us. And, uh, you know, we're all, we're all susceptible to this. Um, and what it does is it, it, and, and our whole education system is geared around this, um, you know, teaching us to think in a certain way, um, teaching us what to think rather than how to think, you know, and, and so, um, you know, we can get really stuck in this way of thinking. And when I do a session, what I'm, what I believe that I'm doing, um, I perform an energetic reading prior to the session. So I tune in with the client energetically and, uh, you know, I actually, um, so I mentioned kinesiology, you know, I use kinesiology as a diagnostic tool. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few reasons for that. I mean, first of all, I think it's, it, it's powerful in that it, when you um, do kinesiology with someone in person, 
you know, the changes are instantaneous, you know, so you, you find a weak muscle, you make whatever correction is necessary and the muscle becomes strong instantaneously. And that, so that's, that gives someone a real physiological and psychological boost, you know, so I, I like kinesiology for that reason. Um, but the thing with kinesiology as well is that, um, you don't actually have to be with the person in order to do it. Um, you know, there's, it's well documented that you can use a surrogate for testing and, and, uh, and treating. So, you know, if you had say a small baby that you were treating or a very elderly infirm or disabled person that wasn't able to follow commands to follow, to do muscle testing, um, you know, you would use someone who has an emotional connection to that person. So the mother of the baby or, you know, the son or daughter of the older person. So, you know, I've just kind of taken that a step further and I, I, I do the readings through my own body because I do feel things in my own body. So I surrender my own body to kind of, you know, I, I ask to be connected with the, with the person that I'm working with on, a, on the highest level possible. So, you know, some people might refer to that as your higher self or your soul or, you know, so I ask to be connected on that level. And uh, the information that I receive is, is, uh, is coming from your higher self or your soul, if you like. So when I did the session with you, that's what I did prior to the session. And so everything that I worked through with you in the session and everything that we spoke about was really uh, coming from your own higher self. So I was, I'm just an interpreter. I am able to access that, that information and then relay that back to you. So what you're hearing is your own truth. You know, so then uh, when you hear your own truth and all of that goes into your subconscious, after the session, you have, you know, you have, you now have, access to that again you know you 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 remember who you really are and that's what's happening for you i think is that you know all the old beliefs are kind of falling away because they're no longer relevant you know you you're much more in touch with who you really are again and so you know the path is so much clearer you know just just to know it's more of a knowing mm. than, than a searching Actually, yeah, I've noticed that even in conversations, it's more of a knowing. I'll be with a client and I'll just blurt something out. Whereas I've always been a blurter anyway, but I used <laughs> to at least think you know, maybe what would be the best. There's just no thought there. There's no guessing. It's like, I know this would be the best. Um, have you got any other examples of things that maybe transformations that have happened with other clients or people that you've worked with? Sure, yeah. I mean, probably... Um... So going from doing the, the work with people in person to, to then, you know, doing that remotely, I've probably only been doing that for about six years. So that is a more recent development. Um, and how that, how that came about, that was probably one of the most profound experiences I've had. So I had a client who, uh, she lives in Canada um, and she, she was in the UK on holiday. She had a friend in the UK who was one of my existing clients and, um, she had lots of stuff going on, physical, mental, emotional. She was in a pretty bad place, really. Um, she was out of work. She was very depressed. Um, and as I said, a lot of physical ailments uh, as well. And uh, I did some work with her in person when she was in London. Um, we got her in a really, really good place. You know, she was feeling fantastic. She said to me, you know, I feel like I'm a teenager again. I think she was probably in her mid thirties at that time, you know, and she, she went like skipping back to Canada. And, um, I thought that was the last I was going to hear from her. And then about three days after she landed back home, uh, she had a, she actually, I think she fell down some stairs and she badly twisted her ankle and it kind of sent her into severe depression again. And it was almost like, you know, everything, all the work we'd done had, had, you know, had been undone. And that, in fact, that's what she said to me. She, she called me up in desperation. Like, I, you know, I've, I've had this accident. I don't know what to do. Like, I feel like, you know, all your good work's been undone. And, um, I, I don't know. It was just, uh, again, a knowing, I just thought, you know, I, and, 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 a, and a desire to help, you know, I was, I, so, I felt so bad for her, you know, cause I knew how good she'd been feeling. And so I said, look, let's just try this, you know, and I'd never done it before. You know, but I, I, I understood the theory behind it. I had been thinking about it um, because I was already doing the testing remotely. You know, to do the treatment remotely was kind of just the next step, you know. So, um, yeah, I just, I, we, we, I just said, look, lie down, relax. Let's just, let's just try and do something here. And uh, we did a session very similar to the session that I did with you. 
um, although it was my first time of doing it. So, you know, I was to some extent making things up as I went along. Um, and uh, while I was speaking to her, so we did, I did the, I, as I did with you, I do a kind of physical portion where I do the healing work and she felt lots of stuff occurring in her body when I was doing that. And then I do a, a, a talking part where I explain everything that I've done, because I think it's very important to bring things to people's conscious awareness. It, you know, if I'm getting messages from your higher self, it's really important for me to relay that back to you and for you to be able to make the connection between things and really understand, you know, why you have these problems so that you can avoid having, having them in the future. So that's what I started doing. I started explaining to her um, what was going on and I was halfway through uh, explaining things and she stopped. She said, Peter, Peter, stop. I, I can't believe this. While you're talking to me, I'm looking at my ankle and I can see the swelling going down in front of my eyes. Like literally the swelling just, she, you know, her ankle was twice the size of what it would normally be. And the swelling just literally went down as we were talking and as we were working through, you know, some of the emotional challenges that she had. Wow. And so it blew my mind. You know, I, I wasn't expecting that. And, but it gave me, it gave me great faith to know that this really works, you know, and it, it's quite interesting. Um, something I learned through, through another Czech practitioner, actually, uh, when I was doing, I think it was um, the uh, HLC1 course, uh, which was then NLC1. It was Emma Lane. I think she said, she said something in that class, which was, I mean, it's a well-known quote, which, uh, um, um, when the, when the student is ready, the master appears, mm -hmm. you know, which is an old kind of Chinese proverb. And, mm -hmm. um, I believe, so, so she didn't say that what she actually said was, um, with this newfound knowledge that I'm giving you, when you go back to your practice on Monday, you will start getting people coming to you asking for exactly, you know, what you can now give them with this newfound knowledge, you know, and, so that, that quote that I just gave, it works in reverse. When the master is ready, the student appears, you know? So when you, when you, um, you know, when you are, become sure about your ability to do something, um, then people will show up that need exactly what you have to offer, you know? And that's kind of happened all throughout my career. Every time I learn something new and I get excited by that and I have a success, then all of a sudden I'll get, you know, people calling me with the, with the exact same issue you know um it's quite interesting we were talking the other day uh, you and i about uh the uh interview that um paul check did with uh, dr ibrahim kareem yes yeah so uh, um and that's on paul check's podcast living 4d with paul check and it's an amazing interview and uh just prior to this session today i was i was guided to listen to the beginning of that interview again and he says there he says um this isn't, this is paraphrase. It's not his exact words, but what he says is develop a theory, uh, keep perfecting it until it reaches a certain level of excellence. And when it does, the universal mind will comply. Uh, and the universe will talk to you in the language of your own theory and make subtle energy behave according to your own theory, you know, and that's exactly what I've found. You know, every time I've come up against a problem like this lady, I couldn't be in Canada. Um, so, you know, I just kind of created this theory, which I, you know, I'd already been formulating and uh, perfecting in my mind, because when he talks about perfecting the theory, it doesn't have to be through, you know, extensive clinical practice. You know, I think this is where like the medical system gets really tied up because everything has to go through, you know, double blind trials and, you know, uh, which I, you know, I think obviously with things like drugs and vaccines and stuff like that. It's very important that things are properly safety tested and uh, go through all these, all these um, stages. But in terms of, you know, if we're just working with subtle energy, um, you can perfect a theory in your mind. Um, and a good example of this, if you think of, um, I mean, I remember um, famous UK sprinter, Linford Christie, he was an Olympic gold medalist. I uh, can't remember which year that was, but, um, I remember him saying that he, he used to, he, he used to visualize himself, you know, he used to visualize the entire race. He had this tunnel vision. He talked about this tunnel vision where he could only see his own lane and he would visualize the entire race and, and crossing the finishing line first and standing on the podium. And he did this like religiously as a practice. That was his meditation, you know, and sure enough, you know, towards the end of his career, it came to pass, you know, so, um, 
you know, I think we can, we can rehearse these things in our mind and we can perfect, perfect these things in our mind. And if we have good intention and we really believe in our ability to do these things, then it's, then it's possible. Um, so that was one example. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, another example was, was I'll, I'll give you a couple more. So um, another one was when I was in that year where I was traveling around the States and I was doing the check training. And I think it was uh, prior to my, I think it was HLC two. Um, so I met a lady on that, on that training, who's still one of my greatest friends. And uh, she was an amazing lady, but she'd been through a hell of a lot. Um, I think, uh, you know, her husband had committed suicide. She'd had lots, lots of different stuff going on in her life. And, um, you know, we became friends on this course. And I remember we were, we were sitting on the wall outside the Czech Institute, um, the old Czech Institute, um, waiting to go into the class one morning. And my hand became drawn to her knee. I didn't know why. I didn't know she had a knee problem. Um, and I, I started performing a healing on her knee. Um, I mean, I, I, I knew what was happening, but I didn't know exactly what I was doing or how I was doing it. And, you know, she, she was, you know, she was blown away. She was like, I can feel that. You're, I can feel that you're doing something there. I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it, you know. And then uh, afterwards, she told me that actually um, when we finished the uh, HLC2 course, she was due to go back home um, to, I think she was, uh, at the time living in Seattle uh, so we were in California she was supposed to be going back home and having a, an operation on that knee and uh, she's never had that operation so this was like this was uh, mm, probably about 12 years ago so this is before I was doing the remote work but you know she went back home and uh, her surgeons were like blown away I mean um, when they x-rayed the knee all the pathology was still there, but she had no pain and she's had no pain since. So, um, you know, so much is to do with the power of the mind, you know, what we believe to be true. Um, you know, so if, uh, if we have a scan or, you know, some sort of medical diagnosis, which tells us that we have a certain problem then we start believing this, you know, and that's just quite, quite a dangerous thing, you know? So, um, that was another amazing experience and probably, probably the, the last one I'll give you was like right from the beginning of my career before I did was doing any kind of healing work. Um, when I was just, I was just a personal trainer. Um, in fact, I don't even think I'd started the Czech training at this point. And, uh, I had, and this is a great example of, um, you know, when the student's ready, the master appears and when the master's ready, the student appears. So, um, I, the same gym where I, where I came across the Shaolin monk, although I think this was before that happened. Um, there was a, there was a, there was someone, there was a guy that used to train there, extremely fit. He was ex, ex military, ex army. Um, you know, I never in a million years thought I would get this guy as a client. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was in great shape. He was probably in better shape than I was, you know, and, uh, you know, I just used to talk to him every now and again. Um, and I'd see him around the gym. And then, uh, suddenly he, he, I, I realized that I hadn't seen him for about two or three months. Um, he'd completely gone off the radar. I just assumed he'd left the gym. And uh, one day he walked in uh, with a walking stick, limping and like slurring his words. And um, I was really taken aback. I was completely shocked. And uh, basically what he told me is that he'd had a stroke. Um, he's, he was in his mid forties. He'd had a stroke and uh, he'd actually discharged himself from the hospital. They, they told him that he wasn't allowed to go to the gym. Um, you know, he was not in no fit, to that, fit state to do that. He would never walk properly again. Um, and he said to me, he said to me, Peter, I want you to help me. And I, I'd hardly spoken to him prior to that, but for some reason he knew he wanted to come to me. There was lots of trainers in that gym. And, uh, yeah, he said, I want you to help me. And I said, well, you know, how, how can I help you? And he said, I, I, I want you to help me to run again, which is kind of crazy. Like this guy was walking in with a, with a walking stick. Um, he, he could, he, 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 he couldn't speak coherently, you know, and he just said to me, I, I, I want you to, I want you to run. I, I, I want to run. I want you to help me to run again. And, uh, I don't know. It was another example where I just knew in that moment that I could help him. And I said to him, yeah, okay, let's do it. You know? Um, and we started working together. Um, you know, as I always do, I went and did loads of research and I found that actually there's no research out there for what to do in this situation because every 
stroke is different. Everyone's brain is wired differently. Um, every stroke will affect a different part of the brain in a different way. And so, yeah, these people generally become medical write-offs quite often, you know, and, uh, you know, I wasn't prepared to accept that I knew that, you know, there was a, 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 you know, this concept of neuroplasticity in the brain that we can quite literally re rewire our brains, that there are, you know, large parts of our brains that are largely dormant and that they can be retrained to perform the functions of, uh, you know, another part of our brain that's no, no longer working. And so I literally, uh, th there's no, there was no rules. I had no kind of, I couldn't follow any of my previous teachings or any, you know, there was no information out there in terms of what to do with this guy. And so literally I just, uh, I just, again, made things up as I went along. Um, but I, I, I thought about the running action. That's what he wanted. He wanted to run. You know, he used to run up mountains with a pack on his back in the army and like he, he couldn't even walk properly, you know? And so, um, yeah, I just uh, deconstructed the running action and I taught him each piece of the running action individually. So we used to, we were in that same studio where I met the Shaolin monk and we used to, um, you know, try and make our way from one end of the studio to, to the other doing all these crazy walk, you know, crazy like movements, a bit like the kind of Monty Python walk. So it was like, you know, just doing hip flexion, just doing, uh, you know, knee extension, just doing, just doing parts of the movement and kind of piecing it together. And I'll never forget it. Um, one day, it took us nine and a half weeks. So uh, one day uh, I used to just get him to copy me. I'd say, Paul, you know, just do what I, just, just follow me, just do exactly what I do. You know, so I'd be doing all these crazy walks. And one day I just, I just knew I could, I could start to run. So I just started jogging around the, jogging around the studio and uh, he started following me. And <laughs> I, I, we, we, we probably went around the studio probably a couple of times before I realized what was happening. And I just looked at him and I said, Paul, you're running. And he goes, oh my God, I'm running. And he ran out of the studio and he ran all the way through the gym and like out onto the street and around the block. And it was just, the mo it was like a Forrest Gump kind of moment. You know, so it was just the most amazing, amazing thing. Um, and that guy now, so well, first of all, you know, talking about the, you know, when the master's ready, the student appears, I subsequently worked with quite a few people with strokes um, around that time. Um, and with him, he's now a personal trainer. So he, he basically, he basically, uh, he was, you know, he'd come out of the army, he was working in security. He was so inspired by what happened, you know, when, with us working together and it was a joint effort, you know, uh, he was incredibly motivated, like the perfect client. And, um, yeah, through, through, through his experience of working with me, he's now a very successful personal trainer himself. Um, he's now in his probably mid fifties and he's still, he's still doing that work. And, you know, he, he's, I know he inspires people, you know, every day. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it's really quite amazing. Uh, what's, what's possible if you just, uh, you know, suspend your, um, you know, any doubts that you might have, you know, in, 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 in what is truly possible. Um, you know, I love the, that there's a quote by Wayne Dyer where he says, I am realistic. I expect miracles, you know, which is kind of how I approach every session. You know, I, I really expect because I've seen so many amazing things happen. I, I almost go into each session expecting that, you know, um, which, uh, you know, obviously that leaves you open to disappointment when things don't work, but uh, it, it just amplifies the energy, you know? So there's, I believe that, you know, there's a lot more chance of things working if you have that belief, obviously it relies on the client also having that belief as well um to some extent um but yeah I, I hope that answers your question i can yeah, think of a few more <laughs> they're brilliant examples no you can keep going i mean actually how is there any way that people can develop these skills do you think themselves because it's very hard obviously obviously the people that are listening to this that are even optimistic that these things are possible are probably optimistic people anyway sure. and probably quite aware, self-aware, but even I've considered myself quite self-aware, but there was still all these layers that I couldn't see, still can't see, but they're not there anymore, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it feels like they're not there. Um, so how can a, how can a normal everyday person that's having pain apart from working with you doing one-on-one -on -one sessions or doing your group sessions, which by the way, guys, you can contact Peter, um, I'll leave his details near this interview.
because he does group sessions and one-on-one sessions. But how can somebody work on developing these skills, do you think, without them having to travel, you know, to Europe and do a, a course? Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is something I do think about a lot. And at the moment, I don't teach my work. Um, that may be something that, you know, is to come. But what I would say is that it, I have tried to teach it to a few individuals uh, or certain parts of it. Um, it's, it's quite challenging uh, to do that because uh, it does rely on a, a great deal of sensitivity, you know, to work in the, way, in the way that I work. And I'm very fortunate that, you know, that was opened up in me. And I have been able to open that up in other people. But what I've noticed is that in different people, it expresses itself in different ways. You know, so, I mean, I, I, I've been one of these people that's always thirsted for more knowledge, you know, and uh, I've always been frustrated by gaps in my knowledge. So, you know, if someone comes to me with a, with a you know, particular problem and I don't know how to resolve it, I, I, I want to try and figure out how to resolve it, you know, and uh, it's quite interesting, something that uh, Paul Check has been saying to me for years. Every time I would come up, uh, you know, every time I met Paul Check in person, and he's got a reputation for kind of uh, whispering these truths into people's ears and like kind of foreseeing the f- people's futures. And, you know, he, he probably about three or four times over the years whispered, whispered in my ear words to the effect of, you don't need to know anything else, you know, uh, just, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's, and it's, I, I kind of finally got the message maybe uh, a couple of years ago um, to stop trying to, uh, you know, take more courses and learn more stuff and really just to master what I already know. Um, you know, so I would say that's one thing is to master what you already know. Um, you know, another thing is to um, look to your, um, you know, because what you already know is what you've been guided towards. And uh, there must be a reason behind that, you know, so mm. it's a part of who you are. Um, I'd also say like our, our most valuable gifts come from our greatest challenges. You know, so if you've, uh, you know, struggled with something in your life, um, not necessarily physical pain, it could be anything. Um, and you've overcome that, you, you know, you've managed to get through that, uh, you know, what you now have is a, is, a, is a great gift that you can give to anyone else who, who might be, you know, going through a similar challenge, you know, so I would say that that's probably an important thing as well to, you know, acknowledge, you know, what you've overcome in your own life, you know, because that, will give you great purpose in terms of how you can help others. Um, I mean, in terms of that, yeah, interrupt the purpose, actually having a purpose and people don't think that this story is worth much at all, but it is. Yeah. Everyone's is unique to them. And so, uh, you know, and so valuable. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I've had this said to me quite a few times, you know, to, I mean, there, there's another practitioner that I came across a few years ago through one of my clients and I went to see this guy and I was really fascinated by his work. He's got his, you know, like myself, he has his own system, which is really intricate and detailed. And I was like, oh, God, I need to learn this as well. You know, and uh, yeah, and this course was like a few thousand pounds, you know, in UK money. And, uh, you know, I, I really have, have a great respect for this, this particular guy because, you know, I, I had a conversation with him about it and he said to me, I don't think you need to take my course. You know, um, you know, you already have something that works. You just need to, you know, you need to master what you already know, what I already said really, but you know, that really kind of brought the message home to me and it reminded me of all the times when I had Paul check, Paul check whispering in my ear. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I think, I think that's important. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I am, open to, you know, sometime in the future, developing some sort of training where I can teach certain aspects of what I do um, in terms of, you know, just my philosophy around, um, you know, the important um, elements of, 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 of healing. But in terms of the actual method- methodology, I almost think it's better if people find their own way to that. Um, what would be a way that they could find their own way to that? I mean, so I don't mean... Um you know, teach us your way, although I'm sure it will eventually eventuate into something like that. But Mm. for example, listen to your intuition, stop, pause for 10 seconds, multiple times a day, that, that Mm. kind of stuff where 
they definitely don't need to do a course. Um, you know, how yeah. can people become a little bit more in tune because the end result might be is that everything gets better in the, mm. in the end, isn't it? They feel better, they're better mental clarity, more certainty, better life, yeah. better relationships, everything. I mean, I mean, there's a couple of things I'll say because, I mean, the first thing I was thinking about, you know, when you asked me the previous question, is that, you know, like the, like the, uh, you know, the, the gentleman I just described who had the stroke and, you know, who's now a personal trainer, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't teach him how to be a personal trainer. You know, he just had the experience with me and it inspired him, you know, and I've had quite a number of clients that have come to me and subsequently become healers, but they found their own way, you know, of doing that, you know. Um, so, you know, when you, when you get clear and balanced, and you start to be able to access this knowing again, um, then if that is your path to heal, then, uh, you know, I think, in, and you pay attention to the signs, you will naturally find your way. And that's probably my second point is that, um, I think I, I recommended a book to you when we first spoke, which was the 10 second philosophy um, by Derek Mills. So Derek Mills is an amazing person. Um, like I know him personally, um, I, I saw him speak um, at an event in London, I don't know how many years ago, some years ago, and he was another person, a little bit like a uh, little bit like Paul Czech and a few other people that have come into my life. Um, th there was something different about him; it was kind of luminosity to him, like he almost kind of emanated light, you know. And whenever I experience that from a person, I feel that from you as well, actually. Um, you know, you've you've definitely got a light that you shine out quite brightly. You know whether you're aware of that or not. So, um, you know, Derek Mills um, very much has this quality about him, and he had, you know, if you read that book, which I'd recommend people to do, um, you know, he had a lot of struggles in his own life. Um, you know, he was struggling in business; his health was struggling. He was struggling financially. Um, he had a, a, a stammer, so he found it very hard to communicate. This guy now goes around the world speaking, you know, he's made a couple of, you know, he's contributed to a couple of uh, movies like the latest uh, Think and Grow Rich movie. He contributed to that, you know, so, um, you know, he, he's renowned worldwide now. And in that book, he talks about the 10 second philosophy is that, you know, there are these 10 second moments in our life, you know. Um, I didn't mean to say 10 seconds when I said 10 seconds before, but I do remember you referred me to that book. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, he talks about these 10 second moments, these kind of moments where, where if you're paying attention, um, you know, it, it will, your, your own intuition will guide you towards, you know, the, the path that you need to follow. So, you know, with him, you know, he was working, you know, he was, he was in the office till late at night, every night, you know, just trying to, trying to um, make things happen for him. You know, he was a financial advisor and, um, you know, one night, I think he was back in the office really, really late. There was no one else there except for the security guard. And the security, the security guard said to him, do you know what time it is? And that was his 10 second moment. In that moment, he, he looked at his watch and he, he realized the time. And he, you know, even though he'd done this for weeks, months, you know, and he suddenly could see exactly why his whole life was, was going wrong, you know. Um, and uh, I mean, I won't give away the whole book, but it's... it's um, it's yeah, really important to pay attention to these, these, these moments, you know, where you, mm. you suddenly have this kind of greater awareness, um, you know, and it could even be, you know, in, in that case, it was kind of a, a realization that, you know, what he was doing just wasn't working, you know, so it wasn't even initially, it wasn't the answer, but it was just the realization, oh my God, this is just ridiculous. You know, I've got a family at home. I think he had four kids or something, you know, mm. I'm still at the office and, you know, and my life isn't changing, you know, so what do I need to change? What do I need to do to, to change this picture? You know? Um, and so, yeah, that's where I think, you know, that's a good place for people to start is, you know, to really look at their lives, uh, look at each area of their life. You know, Derek Mills talks about uh, standards, not set, setting stand, daily standards rather mm. than long-term goals, you know? And so another another interpretation of this or another word for that could be core values, you know? So it's, it's really about us looking at each area of our life, 
Um, so, you know, your, your family, your relationships, your career, your financial health, your physical health and well-being, um, you know, your, your quiet time by yourself in looking at each area and saying, okay, in doing an honest evaluation and saying, okay, in this area of my life, what's working for me and what's not, you know, and obviously where things are working, um, you know, we can uh, keep going with that, but where things are not working, we need to be honest with ourselves and, you know, try and change the strategy. Um, and obviously there's people out there that can help with that. Um, but, you know, I do, I'm a firm believer that, you know, all the answers uh, to all of our problems are within ourselves. Um, and that's really what I'm doing with my work is just to help unlock that for people. Actually, you just made me think then <laughs> with the world situation at the moment. Yeah. Because one of the questions, because I think one of my underlying motives of I've always liked to help people as well and done the whole constantly research and then decided one day I hope can't do this anymore. Um, it just gets to be a bit more lighthearted. Um, humanity and how can we improve it? And then obviously there's the situation with the world going on at the moment. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know well, what, what that's a yeah, big, no, that's big a, subject in question. It is. Yeah, it is a huge question, you know, but, you know, as above, so below, I believe that we can apply the same knowledge that I've just spoken about to even the bigger problems. Um, but let's kind of maybe look at that a little bit. Um, I mean, first of all, you know, with, with what's going on in the world at, mo at the moment, um, you know, we're being fed a particular narrative, um, you know, and some people are listening to that and, and, and blindly following that um, because it's all they've ever known to do. Um, and some people are just have a, a kind of feeling, you know, in the pit of their stomach that it's, something just doesn't feel right here. Um, and, you know, they, they might not even be able to articulate that or really know, you know, what that is, um, you know, but I would say, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a gut feeling, you know, if, if, if things don't feel right to you, you need to question it, you know, and you need to go out there and do your own research. You know, I would say, uh, you know, switch off from, uh, mainstream media if you can because uh, I mean you know it's good to know what's going on in the world to some extent but you have to recognize that you know this is just one perspective on things and often it's quite a quite a biased perspective so it's really important to you know listen to different views um, you know and uh, question things um, you know ask yourself, as I just described, are, am I following my own principles, you know, um, in, in my life, you know, I know at the moment, and certainly in Australia, it's probably more difficult than it is over here just now, um, to stay in alignment with your own truth and your own principles. Um, but you know, I, I, I think people need to, uh, you know, re really, really trust in themselves. Um, and, you know, this is an opportunity. It's a really great opportunity for people to say, you know, if, if, we, if we don't like uh, the reality that we see unfolding around us, and if we have a vision for a, a better reality, um, you know, we, we really need to get in touch with um, how would it feel to, to, to have this better reality, you know? And then what we need to do is try and cultivate that feeling, try and bring that feeling into the now. You know, try and as much as is possible, live your life, you know, with that feeling, um, you know, and it's infectious. You know, the more the more we do this and the more we speak our truth, the more we shine outwardly to others, um, even without necessarily saying anything. Uh, you know, if, we, if we're just living our truth. You know, hang on. Uh, do you mean we don't need to shout it on Facebook? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people, some people that's their path. And some people that is exactly what they need to be doing. I mean, I go on Facebook every Friday and I do a, I do a healing for the collective consciousness because I think it's needed. Um, you know, and this was just an idea that kind of came to me at the beginning of the, this whole uh, situation. Um, and it's kind of gathered momentum. Now, I mean, it depends on opinion really. I would say I, my intention is to kind of uh, help people awaken to themselves. So I don't really want to be another person who's telling people how to think, you know, so 
um, what I what I do is I tap into the collective consciousness and I relay the messages back and I, I, I try and do that in a way that will encourage people to question things, you know, and to read between the lines of things. So I, I, I try not to be overtly political, even though I have strong views myself. Um, and I'm not saying there's not a place for this because it's really important that we do have leaders in our society that are prepared to stand up and, and, and you know, speak their truth and, you know, for others to follow. Um, you know, but we can all do this at our own level, depending on, you know, our own resources that we have, you know, available to us. You know, so some of us are, are good speakers. Some of us are healers. Some of us are connectors. So we're able to connect people. You know, uh, I would say, you know, you're a great connector. Um, you know, so we all have something to give. And even if it's just, you know, being a great parent, you know, if, you, if you're a mother or a father and you're trying to bring up children in this crazy world, um, you know, if, if you can be a great parent and you can instill in your own children your, your, your own values, which come from your heart, um, you know, remember the children are going to be the generation that hopefully gets us out of this mess. You know, there are future politicians, there are future scientists, there are future teachers, there are future healers. So, you know, um, you know, if, you, if, if the most you can do is just be an amazing parent, then you're giving a, a, an amazing contribution to society by doing that, you know? So, you know, we can each do something in our own way. Um, that's, that's, you know, really what, what, what I believe about this. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, t totally in more ways than one. Guys, what Peter is referring to is he's been doing a live video every Friday. If you have look him up on Facebook, I'll make sure the link's near this video as well. On his normal Facebook profile under Peter Strange, I'll have to copy the profile name and you can go back and watch the recordings. And they, they go for actually quite a long time. And that's actually how I first saw his content. My client said, here he is, have a look at, his stuff or actually somebody else i don't know how you came in raha introduced raha said your name that was a year ago somebody else said watch this person's video i thought oh i was already supposed to do that and then <laughs> watched one and then shared it and then you reached out and said oh thank you for sharing that so yeah you can watch these and obviously whatever one you watch is the right one to watch but they go for a long time and he's got, peter goes through i'll talk about you like you're not here goes okay. through um <laughs> Giving me a chance to have a break. The, yes, you've talked for a while. The ailments of the body and then what someone's thinking, feeling, and then a, a short meditation to heal that and then comes back and explains things again. And the one that I did listen to, there was something about the ankle and this part of the neck and that part of the shoulder or something. And I happened to have those things at the time of listening to it. And at the time I thought, that's a coincidence, but I believe it technically anyway. But now I can't, I, can, I just know I've experienced it. It's, you know, I'm running, hopping, skipping, jumping. I've, I wanted to run. I was seeing a Czech practitioner and getting a program. And I said to her, Tanya, I'm going to run again. And she's like, what? I'm not, I don't even, I don't even run. I just want to run again. But I want the ability to run again. Aren't we funny? All us people that need to be able to sprint yeah <laughs> um is there anything else that you want to share with with anybody uh, where can well, people reach you yeah so I, I do just want to speak a little bit about those friday sessions because uh i'd like to sort of explain that a little bit better to yes, people please. um so um how that came about quite interesting really it's so interesting how uh you know there are no accidents there's no coincidence everything kind of folds back into itself so um when uh when the whole uh the, you know the, the pandemic uh was announced and i don't know i'm not sure in australia sort of the, the timeline but in the uk the first uh lockdown began on the 23rd of march and exactly the same uh, day, yeah was it okay so 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 basically um you know i i'd been running a thriving practice in the in the center of london i had like my, my own uh, little studio where i had like a, a you know a um a, tr a, a a treatment facility and a, and a like a one-on-one -on -one personal training gym and basically we had to close you know well we, we closed down um uh and 
you know, I suddenly realized, right, okay, okay, I've got to do everything from home, you know, and I'd never done this before. And, you know, as you know, Kate, I'm, I'm not very tech savvy. I've never really used social media before. Um, so, you know, prior to this whole, to, to, to that lock, initial lockdown, I probably had about 150 Facebook friends. I'd never like sent out a friend request. Like all those people had come to me just because they were other Czech practitioners or family members or, you know, people I'd been to school with and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I'd never kind of utilized it for business purposes. And uh, when the when the lockdown was first announced, um, you know, I sent an, I think on the, the, the day it was announced, I sent an email out to all of my clients saying, these are all the ways that I can, uh, work with you remotely so you know in terms of the healing work the uh, personal training um, you know nutrition and lifestyle coaching etc which is a kind of smaller part of my work really um, and I also because I, I, I recognize that the concept of remote healing is quite difficult for a lot of people to get their heads around um, so I, I I actually offered for the first 25 people that came back to me um, that I would give a free remote healing session um, and uh, because I wanted to create greater awareness around it. And so <laughs> interestingly, you know, it's I, a new business, isn't it? Personal trainers are used to doing yeah, it. I, I was already free. doing it. I, I was already doing it, but on a quite a small level, you know, so uh, I had, I have a page on my website dedicated to it. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't doing it on a, on a, on a grand scale, you know, and, uh, you know, and also with all my existing clients that I could no longer see in person, I wanted to make them aware that there was this other way of doing things, you know, so I, I managed to fill these sessions. I mean, it was mostly people that had already experienced my work. So, um, you know, that led me to think, how can I, how can I reach a bigger audience? How can I kind of create awareness, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the wider sphere, you know, and, uh, Funny enough, one of the people that had one of those free sessions with me, because uh, I didn't limit it to people that hadn't experienced it before, I just kind of put it out there because I, you know, I just wanted to kind of get things rolling again. And I know that you know, if someone has a session and it's positive, you know, they're likely to want to do more or they're going to tell other people, even if they've experienced it before, it's going to re-trigger that, you know, uh, that remembering in them. So one of the people that came back to me almost straight away was, was the same lady that I described earlier who I did the first ever remote healing session on with her ankle and the swelling going down. Yeah. And I did a session with her right at the beginning of the lockdown. And she said to me, Peter, you need to get this out. You know, like you need to, uh, you know, do this in a way that reaches more people. And I'd already kind of had this idea. So I ran it, I ran it by her and she said, just do it, just do it. You know? So, uh, literally like, the end of that week i did the first video you know <laughs> i put out a video i think on that day saying i'm going to start doing these videos i didn't know where it was going to go i didn't even know how to do a video on face a live video on facebook and i put out in this introductory video i think i had about uh well almost like everyone that was my friend on facebook at that time watched it um and probably about 300 or so people watched it in the end and then uh yeah, I, I just started doing them. I just started doing them each week. And just to explain the concept quickly, uh, it's, I do the same reading as I, I would do for an individual, but it's for the collective consciousness. So I'm really kind of, I, I believe uh, that, you know, um, this concept of as above, so below, you know, we, we're, we're all individuals, but we're all part of a greater whole. We're all part of the human race, and and as a and there's never been a time in history where as many people in the world are going through a similar experience at the same time as this. You know, so um, you know this this is what gave me the idea and the inspiration, and you know I just I just um, I developed this theory as I mentioned, you know, to, you know, referring to Ibrahim Karim earlier. You know, if you develop a theory and you perfect it and you believe it you know, the universe will start to conform to this. And I, I, I believe that, you know, the same methodology that I use to uh, read, you know, uh, an individual's body and mind, I can apply this to, to the collective consciousness. So that's really what I do with those sessions is I imagine this metaphorical body and mind that relates to everyone, you know, and then I perform these readings. And because we're all affected by the, you know, what's going on in our collective reality, um, you know, sure enough, I would get people coming back to me very much like yourself saying, you know the things you spoke about in that session i've been feeling pains in those exact same areas of my body in the last week you know so i knew from that that you know there was something to this you know and uh 
I've just, yeah, I've just, I've just kept going with it. And uh, it goes out every Friday on my Facebook page at 5.30 UK time, uh, which I'm not sure what that is now where you are. Um, but uh, you can watch them anytime. You don't have to watch it live. Uh, in fact, that's in the middle of the night where you are. So you, you can watch it live. You can, uh, I'm sorry, you can watch it uh, after the event. Um, as you said, you can go back and watch any of them. There's 26 of them up there now. So people go back and watch the ones from the beginning, even though it was a reading for that time. If you follow your intuition uh, to take you to, you know, the message that you need, uh, I'm sure you'll find it there. So uh, that, that's, that's really how that came about. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit, you know, so people could understand it a little bit more. It's, and it's embarrassing when you first make your first video, isn't it? As you know, <laughs> but when it's, well, when it's not about, think about the purpose that you did it for, it's, why you're a coach in the first place because you're like helping people so when i'm always saying this to clients that have, have trouble making content when it's not about us it's mm. very easy to do the thing yeah all the time um and so you've got how can people work with you they can obviously do the one-on-ones um yeah. on the internet that you've mentioned and then you've got some groups sessions yeah. as well haven't you Great. Thanks. Well, thank you for mentioning that. that was, yeah, that was what I wanted to come to next. So, um, you know, through the success of doing this, um, these, these readings for the collective consciousness, which is free, um, you know, I, I, I obviously had people coming to me from all over the world, you know, wanting to do sessions uh, privately, but, you know, I'm not cheap. I, I, you know, I believe I, I try to charge what I'm worth. And so I know that, um, so for some people, you know, it, it might not be affordable for them uh, to work with me privately um, or, you know, it might, it might not be affordable to keep on doing it on a consistent basis, you know, um, because a lot of times um, actually, you know, a lot of people only need one or two sessions to really get themselves into a good place. Um, so, you know, most people can afford, uh, afford to invest that in themselves. But if someone wants to have a more kind of consistent input, you know, which is just keeping them centered keeping them on track keeping them aligned um keeping them awake and aware you know then that's where the group sessions come in it's kind of like a halfway house so you know obviously with the with the the friday sessions which are for everyone you know almost eight billion people on the planet um you know that i'm trying to address there um the group sessions are for eight people so this you know it's going to be more specific to the individuals in that group by a multiple of a billion because we've gone from 8 billion people to eight people, you know? So, um, you know, I do a reading for that, for, for the group. Um, so this is like, a, it's, it's actually a membership program. So, uh, people pay a small amount it's in the UK. I think it's 20 pound a month in Australia. It's roughly about $35 a month. Um, and with that, there's a weekly session, which they, they tend to be quite long. Uh, they can be like an hour and a half to two hours, but and it, it, um, generally we do, we do those in the evening, but we, you know, if, if people want to get the group together, um, you know, I will try and make it work, you know, for you in terms of your schedule. So, you know, I do have gaps in my schedule at the moment where I can do that. Um, so I could probably accommodate, you know, a couple more groups. I know you're trying to get a group together. Um, so it's a membership program. Um, you pay a, a monthly rate, which basically allows you access to these weekly sessions, which is, you know, the group I've been working with so far, they've all experienced, you know, uh, great, you know, changes in their lives, um, not just physically, but, you know, mentally, emotionally, uh, a better capacity to kind of deal with everything that's going on. Um, and I can see them growing. It's really beautiful to watch that. Um, so it just kind of keeps, it, it keeps you on track. Um, and uh, I can't remember what I was going to say there. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how those sessions work. And the other benefit of having this membership is that if you have this membership, uh, any private sessions that you do to do with me, whilst you have this membership, you get it at a vastly reduced rate. Um, so, uh, you know, there's another great benefit of, of, of having that membership. Um, now, I mean, you can reach out to me via my website, it's peterstrange.co.uk. Um, there's an inquiry form on there. You can send me questions. I'm always happy to speak to people. I do an initial consultation free of charge. So, you know, I'll have a 
20, 30 minute chat with someone free of charge before, you know, deciding whether it's a good fit for both parties. Um, so people can contact me uh, via the details on my website. Um, if they want to find out about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the subscription program, the membership program, it's called Reset Infinity. And you can find that on my Facebook page if you just scroll down. Um, and again, you know, if you want to find out more information, just reach out. Um, and obviously the, the sessions go out on the Fridays on, on, uh, on Facebook, which, as I said, you can watch at any time. So and we're trying to get him onto all the other channels, guys. We're trying <laughs> all the, all these friends that, <laughs> well, I, you know, it was a very, it took a very long time for me to start using Facebook or so I thought one of yeah. my clients that was in marketing at the time said, Oh, you've got to do that. And I thought, Oh, no, God, I'm not just in showing people my food. Are you serious? I'm not going to do that. No, but um, yeah, it is definitely an amazing tool to reach more people. That's for sure. And more people with amazing skills like you get to be on there as well, because coming from the Czech practitioner background and then being on there now, I do know that a lot of it is smoke and mirrors as well. So it's very mm. hard to, to tell what's real, but I can tell you guys, I wouldn't be into, I don't interview anybody that's actually not real or that I don't like. So that's why there's not a gazillion interviews. I'll make sure all the ways <laughs> I'll make sure there's all the ways to contact Peter uh, near this recording, wherever you're listening to it. Um, do you have any final words that you want to enlighten anybody with? Um, Just to put you under pressure. <laughs> put me on the spot now. Well, okay, I, I'll give you. I'll give you like my most favourite quote that I you you probably you know if you watch my sessions on the Friday, you, mm -hmm. you've probably heard me say this. I, I often uh, quote Bruce Lee because Bruce Lee was um, he was as well as being like an incredible martial artist and a film star and just an amazing personality. You know, he was a, a very deep thinker. He was an incredible philosopher. He wrote like reams and reams of kind of phil philosophical uh, thinkings, you know, which, you know, subsequently after his death have been published. And um, <laughs> he's got lots of quotes, lots of famous quotes, but uh, this one is probably the most simple it's incredibly simple but incredibly profound and it, it is that and this is bruce lee speaking your main purpose is to become your true self your main purpose is to become your true self you know so wow. um i you know sometimes replace the word become for the word remember you know so your main purpose is to remember your true self because who we truly are is who we've always been but so many of us have kind of lost sight of this because of, you know, uh, the conditioning that I spoke about earlier, because of what happens, to, you know, whatever's happened to us in our lives, you know, and so your main purpose is to become your true self, you know, uh, or for your true self to come into being, you know, so to remember your true mm. self. So I would yeah. say, you know, if I'm people put can, that one at the front yeah, of <laughs> yeah, if people can maybe, uh, you know, just meditate on that. That's it's it's very powerful. You know, if you if you choose to, you know, uh, shine who you really are out into the world, um, you know, then um, you know everything that you could ever wish for, you know, should find its way to you. You know, the, the key is to be your true self. You know, and uh, you know, I'd probably like to leave it there, to be honest. And it's still, it's a work in progress. I'm still working on that my, myself, you know, uh, we're all a work in progress, you know, so just start today. Yep. We definitely all are guys. I hope you got lots out of that. Feel free to reach out to either of us. I'll leave my details below as well. And maybe we'll have Peter back on for round two. Thanks Peter. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you everyone.